Hi, <laughs> my, my name is Stéphane Servo, and with Yun Junko on my side, we are both working, uh, we are both a software engineer at Igalia, and we are both working on a, on a Vulkan video this year. So we'd like to present you uh, our work uh, on uh, Vulkan video. Uh, so we implemented a, an H.264, H.265 encoder uh, using the Vulkan video extension. Uh, and uh, we'd like to give you our feedback and do a recap of what Tony already presents. Uh, it's going to be from the Mesa side uh, with Yunjun and to the GStreamer side, to the application side. Yeah. So on the agenda first, I, I'm going to make a summary of what already said uh, Tony uh, brilliantly. It's like uh, the idea is like to present you what is the Vulcan video and what is uh, uh, what we have been actively working on uh, closely with uh, with the TSG to propose a, a solution uh, on the on the Mesa side. It's going to be uh, using Intel, Intel NV and uh, and the, the Gestumer side. But first of all, let's talk about uh, Vulcan video. So. It's uh, as we already know. Uh, the idea is like to be close, close from the from the graphics and the display, uh, and avoid like to have like different framework to interact with the video and and graphics. So the idea was to provide propose a solution where uh, you can uh, directly encode, decode contents and interact with the uh, with the graphic display, and and GPU uh, facilities. So it's. Uh, very highly optimized, very uh, low level. That's why we offer like a stateless codec, uh, H.264, H.265, uh, AV1, uh, VP9 also is on the on the on the to-do list. On the on the on, yeah, it's going to be soon available. Uh, the idea was also to be definitely cross-platform, uh, supporting uh, either Linux, Windows. I don't think macOS is going, is on the to, on the short list because yeah it's kind of I would say difficult to have like a stateless codec on a, on a, on macOS, but yeah on the other platform is it, it, it's going to work fine, and uh, the idea is like to have also the possibility to have a vendor specific behavior with, through capabilities to give like more opportunities to to uh, have more power or less resources and then decide uh, how the encoder should or the decoder should behave. So a little bit of the timeline of the weekend video TSG. Uh, it has been initiated in March 2018. Uh, provisional extension has been released in uh, in 2021. There's been a uh, very hard work from the AHV, AMD, Intel, NVIDIA to, and also open source operators such as uh, Igalia or Corabora, for example. And we, we also uh, actively work to have uh, this uh, provisional extension uh, re released in, uh, in 2021. In 2023, in January, we finally released the decoder extensions, uh, including H.264 and H.265, uh, AVC or HGVC. Uh, and in December 2023, uh, a month or two months ago, we finally released the, the encode extension. And as uh, you may know, last, uh, no, two weeks ago, I think we, we released also the, the AV1 uh, decode spec. A little bit, uh, a little scheme on, on what is video encode. I guess, you know, as uh, uh, Tony already asked, uh, we, are, we, we are no, not all familiar with, uh, with encode. To give a little bit of what is encoding, it's like you having an iframe, so an intra frame, a self contained frame. This frame is going to be encoded totally. And then we're going to have, we're going to have P frame and B frame. So P is for predictive and B for bi directional. The yeah, SD, like to, as you see with the car, the idea is like to encode the movement, the, the temporal uh, difference between frames. And not like uh, encode all the frame totally as uh, an iframe is. Uh, so as you can see, there is like a relation between. And in uh, in the use of encoder, 
and uh, we had to deal with this uh, temple uh, timeline uh, in the sense that uh, how we're going to feed the encoder uh, from for an iframe or for a p-frame. Uh, the idea of the p-frame, as you may understand, is that is going to encode less in the information, so we're going to save bandwidth with uh, with this kind of uh, of uh, of frames type. Now let's have like a, um, a description of how it works in in Vulkan. So that's the same uh, scheme, but a little bit of recap is like you what where is the application is in blue. Uh, the application is going to deal with the state of the encoder and also with the data stream the so it, it's going to disencapsulate the um, uh unpack the the data from from the no sorry that's the decode side the, on the encode side we're going to receive raw frame so it's going to be uh uh YFCBCR frame or yuv frame or rgb frames so we're going to transform it to uh something uh usable by by uh, by by Vulkan. First of all, we're going to create the session to tell that uh, we want a specific encoder, such as H264, H265, AV1. Uh, we're going to prepare the buffers to to be to be um, to be encoded. So first of all, we're going to uh, set the, the the rate control, the quality, uh, what we need to know about what we're going to receive from the encoder. When this is ready, we can start to encode. That's the red uh, blocks where we're going to receive the, the, the raw frame and, and push it to the queue, encoder queue. And then uh, out of this, we're going to get the, the VK buffers with going to be encoded uh, contents and also um, uh, the the sequence headers so the the the, the header uh, representing the stream which is going to be used by the by the application to encapsulate then the 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 the, the encoded buffer so it can be streamed or it can be like a, a file uh, anything that the application will take care of so next we are going to introduce uh yujun who's going to talk about uh, the mesa Mesa project. Yeah. Hi, I'm Hyun Jun Ko. Um, I'm working for Igalia and working on Vulkan Video Support in Mesa project. So, <coughs> sorry. Today I'm going to talk about the status of uh, Vulkan Video Encoder Support in Mesa project. So, um, first of all, I'm going to talk about what Mesa is about, and then I'll talk about history of the development for this feature. And then um, th um, about the current status of the Vulkan uh, Video Support in Mesa projects. And then I'm going to share uh, some of my experience that I have had along the way. So you could get a sense of what it's like about uh, uh, working on IntelliPews. And, and then also share about the challenges that I have faced so far. And, Lastly, the plan for this year. So, um, Mesa, um, actually, uh, tomorrow morning, uh, my colleague Iago and Faze are going to talk about this in detail. So, I'm going to talk very briefly this time. Um, Mesa is a project began as an open source implementation of the OpenGL on Linux. And now uh, people, um, in this community are uh, actively implementing Vulkan specification on various GPUs such as Intel, AMD, um, Qualcomm Adreno with reverse engineer, Raspberry Pi, Imagination Technologies, Amali, or even um, NVIDIA with reverse engineer. So um, most uh, um, Linux graphics developer uh, are contributing to this project uh, very actively, including Igalia, uh, where I'm working for, and Intel, Google, Collabora, etc. Um, history. Um, Dave, uh, Dave, who is a talented uh, open source uh, developer, started in 2022 on AMD GPU first, then 
then Intel defibrillator. Um, uh, he tested uh, with uh, FFmpeg that Lin, uh, who is another great multimeter developer, worked on. And you can find the link his blog post about uh, describing the situation at the time. And then later, Igalia joined um, on this feature. Um, uh, right after the next uh, next to me, um, <coughs> Stefan and Victor, he's not here though started uh, working on GStream. And Charlie sitting here, uh, started working on Vulkan CTS. And I, Hyunjun, and that's me, joined uh, in 2023 and started working on Intel GPU. So they uh, could fully de dedicate to AMD GPU. RIDB. So um, uh, just for your information, um, uh, RIDB is a kind of code name of uh, uh, AMD GPU open source Vulkan drivers, and AMV is a code name of uh, Intel GPUs open source Vulkan drivers. Um, so now the uh, current status. Um, uh, uh, first, uh, they've implemented uh, HT6 Pro on both AMD and Intel GPUs. And then I implemented uh, HT6 5 decoding. And all, all of them landed uh, uh, in the middle of last year, and then we started working on encoding, and Dave, um, yeah, um, Dave, uh, uh, th these are almost ready for now, and Dave uh, already opened a merge request um, um, for RADIV, and I am implementing encoding on Intel GPUs, and um, it it generally works right now, but um, um, there are still some issues that have to be fixed right now. So that's why it's still in my personal branch. But uh, hopefully I could fix them and open new module requests very soon. So you can, you can take a look at this table and you can get a clear idea of where we are. So now I'm gonna describe uh, what I've been working, uh, what I've been working so far. Um, but um, I'm not gonna talk in detail about this. But so, um, as I said just before, I dived into Intel Vulkan drivers in 2023 and started working on H.265 decoding first. After I made it land and I started working on encoders. Um, first of all, um, there are uh, tons of documents that you have to refer to because there are lots of uh, generations of Intel GPUs. So you have to uh, find out, uh, you have to find what you're looking for in, in these documents and learn uh, uh, video relevant uh, commands on, on the specific GPU. So you have to choose one packet uh, generation uh, that is being widely used uh, recently out there. And, and you have to start to learn uh, a lot of video commands. Um, yeah, uh, actually, uh, honestly, it was painful, but um, definitely it is not horrible. But Thankful because um, you know, yeah, yeah, it's better than nothing because um, you know, compared to things like uh, reverse engineers, uh, this is God blessed, right? Especially for uh, developers. And then uh, again, thankfully, uh, there is a source code of Intel VA API drivers. Um, VA API is a uh, uh, kind of uh, the existing interface to, for playing video on Linux and Intel VA API drivers work very well now. So that means you can refer to the uh, source code when you when you don't understand the documents or when you're looking for uh, other information that can't be hardly found on the internet. So yeah, here's an example of a. Uh, um, uh, the command streams so for H265 encoding, and I'm not going. I'm not going to explain like uh, what 
each comment is doing, uh, but um, I wanted to show just uh, what it looks like. So your work is to assemble these comments correctly with all required parameters, uh, which is best from applications, correctly set. Um, yeah, and and send them to the kernel. Uh, uh, of course, uh, according to the program specification. So um, when working on when working on this, um, you have to be very careful when you complete each command. Otherwise, you got you're gonna get a GPU hang or even whole system down. And of course, there is a way to fix this. Um, you have to read documents again very carefully and find out which part of your command stream is wrong. But it's not that easy. But um, another easier way is uh, uh, dumping whole video commands uh, from the API drivers uh, into a file and then uh, compare it uh, with the uh, commands that you have created. In this way, I fixed um, several crazy GPU hands and and obviously made me uh, keep going forward. Uh, on the other hand, there's a benefit of uh, working uh, the existing major project like this A and B. Uh, for example, this, <coughs> this, mm, this kind of uh, uh, the existing infrastructures of A and B makes made me uh, uh, easy to handle uh, Balkan memories and Balkan images. And also there are a kind uh, active AMB maintainers and thanks to them, I got proper read from them and I can, I could make it land on time. And at the beginning, um, um, I tested with FFmpeg that Lean worked on because their um, GStreamer and Vulkan CTS were under development at the time. But as they get in, as they were getting mature, I can I could get a chance to test my implementation on various uh, with various applications uh, that uses different parameters or different setups. So and and that makes me uh, find uh, bugs easily. Challenges, um, GPU hang, yeah. GPU hang always made me frustrated because there are not enough useful tools to investigate. So, but uh, as I said, um, dumping command stream from VAP drivers uh, have me uh, keep going forward. And also another thing is uh, mm, there are lots of generation of Intel GPUs and that means it's generation might have uh, different commands or different parameters, different memory size, memory alignment. So, so that's why we have, to, I have to uh, choose one uh, target uh, generation and focus on it and then uh, expand uh, other generations. Uh, plan for this year, uh, uh, landing this encoding should be my first work for this year, and then I could start working on AB1 support. And also, um, I'm not sure, but for the moment, but um, it might be possible to work on another GPU for Balkan Video support. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure for the moment. And that's all from my side, and Stefan is going to talk about this. Hello again. Yes, any question? So I really appreciate the work you guys do. I just want to clarify that the work uh, those guys are doing are like when the recording command buffers is submission. That's why it's so challenging because any commands you're submitting in the, for recordings and submission from the API side, those guys have to deal with hardware specifics, different generations and so forth, as well as to make sure that whatever um, bad stuff you pass in works and you know and, and doesn't cause any hangs. So I appreciate uh, the work you guys are doing thank on you. this side. So thank you. 
So yeah, uh, after the driver side, let's talk about the application side. Uh, so as Andrew mentioned, we had also FFmpeg, and this year we we dedicated uh, our time to work on the GStreamer uh, support of this Vulkan uh, extension. And uh, so first of all, what is GStreamer? So who knows about GStreamer here? Not that bad. <laughs> So uh, it's a uh, it's a uh, it's a multimedia framework, a twenty-year-old uh, multimedia framework. Uh, it's a cross-platform. It's the, it's uh, the idea is like to have like a black box system where you interconnect elements. Uh, you have three type of elements: the source, the transform, and the sync element, and you interconnect it uh, to basically stream uh, a media. Uh, or to, well, I mean, to transform a media, so to decode or encode or transcode. Uh, it's nat native, uh, it's multi-platform, highly optimized, so it was definitely a very good pick to test uh, uh, hardware accelerity uh, codec. Uh, there is already support for VA, for DX12, but it was, uh, it was also very good like to have the, the idea of what a vegan video is capable of with this streamer so to give you a little bit of an illustration of the what is a streamer pipeline we name it a pipeline in the sense that it's like the, the data is uh, is uh, flowing over this this pipeline you're having the video to test source um it's going to be this uh, this pattern and here you're having the uh, you upload the the um, this pattern in this uh, raw frame to the to the Vulkan memory space and then you you encode it you decode it with also a Vulkan as you may see on the fourth um, block and you download the, the result and you uh, display it that's what we see on the on the screen on the on the right bottom uh, so what is the status for the Vulkan video support in JStreamer Right now, you can follow the Vulkan video status. We we created a page where we talk about the open source uh, support of uh, Vulkan video. Uh, so you might have like all the updates and what we support right now. Uh, as you may see on this slide, the H.264 decoder has been re uh, merged this, this year, the last year in December 2023 uh it, it it is now ready h264 should come soon uh as av1 um regarding the encoder that the purpose of this presentation we are uh, the review is ready uh to be merged or reviewed still there is like some uh, some uh, issue still i guess we need to uh, to tackle but yeah, it's ready to be used and, and tried if you want to give it a try. It's uh, uh, supporting H.264 and H.265. A little bit of the state machine. I hope you can see something on the on the screen uh, to be to fit on the on the vertical uh, side. It was complicated. So the idea was like to have um, on green what you need to do if you want to start the the the, the session. So you start you need the video session. Telling well, what are the the resolution, what are, what is the resolution, what is the the the, the codec you would like to to use. Uh, then you initialize the the session parameters such as SPS, uh, PPS, VPS. Then um, you reset the codec state of the of the driver to tell like you are now ready to to start a, an encode queue. And you can change the quality on the fly. You can you can retrieve the session parameter if they, if they change. You can probe the the, um, the 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 driver to know if there is new session parameters. You set the price header for the the current frame, and then you start to encode the, the buffer. Uh, you query the result and you repeat the the the, the, the scheme. So let's talk now about the challenges uh, we have been facing this year uh, using the Vulkan Video and Streamer uh it's a cross-platform api so various behavior be between the uh, various hardware uh windows linux uh nv 
uh, NVIDIA, uh, uh, RADV. So first of all, I had to, well, we had to tackle all the issue we were, uh, validation layer were like giving us. And it was very useful because a lot of crashes were because uh, I were, uh, we were not using correctly the a API. So thanks to validation layers, it helped me a lot like to understand uh, what I was doing wrong. Uh, so exact behavior, as I said, can vary be be between hardware vendors. So on um, one hardware, we can have like a one queue doing everything. On the other hardware, we have to use separate queue. That's typical uh, issue we have been facing. Uh, the quality can be different. The rate control can, behavior can be different between the, the platform. In, a, in, in a one platform, I was having a very low quality in the beginning, so I was I was suspecting using the incorrectly the, the, the standard parameters. It was a different behavior between uh, between uh, between hardwares. Uh, so yeah, it uh, it was a back and forth uh, to understand why it was not working properly. CTS helped me a lot with that also to know that I was properly using the the the, the standard parameters. Synchronization, so yeah, all memory from Vulcanize 2023. I can tell you that we have been like uh, struggling to perform a demo on, on, and getting like some green screen. I don't know for for where here. So now it's it's uh, it's it's fixed, but it has been also an issue with the encoder. So we we work the streamer state machine for the for the memory barriers fences or what is done to achieve the the synchronization synchronization inside the G streamer. So there is a, um, a GST Vulkan operation uh, object to handle the common synchronization. It basically, do everything you need to to uh, achieve a common buffer and and wait for the the, the correct state of the of the common buffer uh, achievement. Uh, I've been also uh, struggling with the DBB management. So I see that it's already uh, ten thirty. So I'm gonna be quick with that. But it was like the main issue I had, like uh, dealing with IPB frame, uh, dealing with the reference slots, uh, be sure that what I give to the begin uh, command was correct according to what the standard parameters was, where, and what uh, the encode uh, uh, command was performing. I had a lot of crash with that. And, uh, and uh, yeah, it was not always detected by the validation layers. It was typically when I was using incorrectly the the standard parameters, so I was having a really mysterious crash. Uh, it helped me to have also various implementation. I could compare the the the, the behavior and see that I was having a crash here, not crash, or having a log here, and yeah, uh, having a multiple implementation was useful. So yeah, it was a, a very challenging part of this encoder uh, uh, implementation. So the Vulkan tooling, thanks for the tools available in the in, in Vulkan. Uh, validation layer was uh, the main one I've uh, been using. I was always afraid of receiving message because sometimes it's kind of hard to understand the wording. But yeah, when I was having nothing, I was like celebrating with, uh, with the Beyond Friday night. Uh, I, I, it helped me to understand the specification. Uh, so definitely, you have, you have to to enable the validation layer to to understand wh what your code is doing. Uh, do not prevent the misconfiguration, as I said, for the standard parameters. In this case, Metsa driver helped me a lot to understand what I, where I was having driver pitfall when I was the the implementation was incorrect. I used a lot of graphics reconstruct. Uh, VK layer energy API dump also helped me a lot. I compared the implementation FFmpeg and CTS, where F CTS was the most advanced uh, uh, software regarding the, the the support of encode. It helped me a lot to compare the the, the parameters and see, okay, the, here I'm having this, here, here I'm having that. Uh, it was very helpful. So yeah, as I said, the CTS was a very helpful uh, uh, software. I don't have demo <laughs> my computer, but you can come to me and uh, and check that it's working. We are having like uh, the the with this software, I can provide you like a, a demo like privately. 
And uh, do you have any question? Do you have an interest yeah, on, we, on this we can work? cut into the uh, break for a little bit if there's a couple of questions that you want to ask. Uh, hi, uh, I probably missed the slide when you were you were talking about validation layers, but uh, I have a question related to that. Um, are, are there any validation layers which validate the usage of Vulkan video? Yeah, yes, definitely uh, very uh, very accurate. Oh, is that something which has been recently added or? Yeah, yeah, it's been released. Yeah. Okay, okay. CTS yeah. is not released. But uh, I think it's going to be a question of days uh, to be released. But the validation layer is definitely available. Sure, yeah, that's helpful. Thank you. Okay, we'll do one more. Uh, uh, it's very fast. I saw that you said H.264 support in GStreamer. H.264 decode was ready. Yeah. What's the status of H.265 decode? It's going to be ready. I mean, it's going to be released this month, I would say. Thank you. We, we could give. Just uh, one more comment. I really appreciate the like, Igalia work on everything. Uh, not only just streamer. Now, a lot of you guys know that um, in order for us to pass the standards, we have to have CTS develop, which is testing the pipeline for the encoder and decoder. And Igalia also um, helped a lot on this side. So otherwise, you can't release standards. Uh, validation layer as well. Um, validation layer is something that verifies pretty much the KHR side, not the standard side, by the way. Be careful with this. And when you enable it, it's a little bit frustrating because you like enable it and you start getting those crashes with cryptic messages mm -hmm. a lot. And yep. then you have to figure out what's going on, but it gets slapped to the hand. It's like, no, you should not do this. <laughs> and you have to figure out what exactly. But so, yeah, this is. Uh, Type of challenges uh, when you develop frameworks. So for you guys, when you start using the APIs and the frameworks, it should be much simpler and uh, yeah, easier to work with. I also wanted to just also say that Valve has been a big supporter yeah. in sponsoring all of those projects. But regardless, as well, really appreciate yeah. Valve's help. I just wanted thanks to for the out. sponsorship from yeah from Thank, you. Thank you guys. All right, round of applause for these guys. Fantastic. Fantastic.